Hello, this is Taeyong from Midas IT. How are you today? I hope all is well and thank you for coming. And also, I really appreciate taking your time. Today's subject is about dead loads. The dead load is used as one of design loads when an engineer designs a structure. And many analysis software provides essential functions to consider dead loads. Those are frequently used and it commonly contains handy options. Therefore, I'd like to give you some information about dead loads, related functions in Midas Civil, and some applications that contain dead load cases. Please feel free to watch this webinar. Here are contents that I prepared. First of all, we will see what functions are provided to consider dead loads in Midas Civil, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you a short description to you. After that, we will see several application models that have dead loads. Let's see what functions does Midas Civil have for have for dead loads. What are dead loads? The dead load is one of the design loads in several design codes for structures. The dead load is the, dead, the load that makes permanent deformations at structures during service period. The weight of structures or attachments on structures are common case of the dead load. For instance, in a building, the weight of a loop, walls, floors, columns, attachments, and etc. can be the dead load. In a bridge, the weight of a gutter, slab, or deck appear on abutment of pavement, and other attachments can be the dead load. Let's move on to Midas Sibyl. Midas Sibyl provides a static loads functions group. You can see it under load tab here. Static loads functions group has self weight, nodal loads, beam loads, and pressure loads functions. Those can be used to consider dead load. We can define a load case using this procedure. First, select static loads group under load tab. Second, click static load cases function and define a load case. Lastly, select a load function that we want and the final detailed information in the dead load uh, in the load case. Now, we will take we will work through those functions that I mentioned. First one is that in load cases function. Before we use its load functions, we should define a load case via static load cases function. While learning analysis software, we perform static analysis for each load case. When a load case is defined, we should select a load type here. So there are so many types prepared, but those are used when we use auto load combination functions in the load combination function of Midas Civil. Therefore, if you don't use the auto, auto load combination function, it is not mandatory to select um, exact load type. So you can select one that you want. Now we will see each load function so first one is self-weight function. 
Through this function, we can consider the weight of a structure easily. The self-weight is calculated with the volume of a structure, weight density defined in a material property function, and the scale factor defined in this function. If the shape of a st structure is not complex, uh, we can compare analysis results and our hand calculation. Next, next one is nodal, lo nodal load functions. This function applies point loads to nodes of elements. Available load types are actual forces and moments. The direction of loads follows global coordinate system. And next, these are element beam load functions and line beam load function. These functions apply point loads and dis distribute loads to beam elements. So, is it possible to apply this function to truss elements? The answer is no. The loads can be applied to nodes of truss elements. So we can find the marked difference between two functions in this figure. So I assume the load, the load type like this. So the beam, if, so the element beam load function applies the load to each beam element. So we can see the each element has each load type. But the line beam load function considers assigned several beam elements as one element when it applies a load like this. And this figure shows available load types in two functions. We can apply loads with exact location and amount of for forces to consider that loads. The location of loads can be determined using the ratio or a ratio of length or actual length. And uh, especially if we select pressure load type, we can apply pressure loads to beam elements. Applied pressure load is will be recal recalculated as, a, as the uniform distributed load considering the width or height of a section. So this case, I applied the 5 kN per meter square uh, pressure, but the the software will consider the this load as a as a distributed load using this height. So the formula is like this. So we the software will calculate that this uh, element has 10 kiloliter per meter. Therefore, if pressure loads are provided as a design load and uh, you have beam elements as a model. You can use this function without additional calculation for input. Next one is pressure load function. This load type can be applied to plate elements and surfaces of solid elements. There, there are two ways to apply the pressure load. The first, first way is to use define pressure load type option. Here we can define up to 8 load cases and apply all load cases to, to the same elements at once. So in this figure we can see the two load cases defined and, uh, and these load types will was uh, applied it to the plate element. So after uh, after applying, oh, we can I can see 
uh, this apply the load on the plate element. And the second way is to apply the pressure load to elements directly. We just select a type of pressure loads and apply it to elements selected. So in this case, we don't need to define the pressure load type in advance. And this is hydrostatic pressure load pressure function. Uh, we can apply triangular shape or non-uniformly shape of pressure more easier than pressure loss function. This function can be used to consider the soil pressure or water pressure. And the last one is plane load function. This function applies a load type defined in advance uh, to assign the plane. If there are elements in the assigned plane, the load will be placed on the elements. The highlighted things is that plane load type can be applied regardless of mesh plane of elements. So before we checking application model, we let's uh, let's see the demonstration with Midas Civil. Okay, I prepared the one beam element model. I will copy that. So I think I need one more beam element here. Okay. So let's let's see node load for node load first. So move on to the load tab and we can see the stating loads here. And there is the stating load cases function. So it, so we need, if we, uh, before we uh, create the load case, uh, load information, we need to define a load case in the stating load cases function. So click here. So there, so there are four cases now. So if you want more, just input name and select the load type. So we should select the load type at least one. So there are so many types you can see, but each load type will be used uh, for the auto load combination function. So if you, if you don't need that, you just select the user defined load like this and uh, you can and also if you want to see the auto load combination function you can see that under the leisure tab there is a load combination function and it has auto generation option so through this option you can define the auto load combination as per each design code so close that. Yeah. Uh, first of all is self weight. So click the load type and here you can see the load case defined it defined. So select the L C for instance and uh, input factor, scale factor. So, and uh, if you click add, you can see the edit load case set load type in the LC load case. And uh, let's move on node loads. So, as you know, 
noodle load can be applied to each node of elements. So in the same manner, in the same manner, select the one load case and input the value to each component like this. And you can see, as you can see, you can input the minus or plus uh, unit. So it means the direction of uh, forces. So you can control the direction of forces using the plus or minus. And select node here, like this. So after applying uh, load load information, and if you want to see the where the load applied it, uh, just it is quickly. So you can see the load case in the work tree and there are some load name so if you right click here you can see the display on display so just click display you can see the direction with the values of a load and if you don't want to see that just click on display